so in this module 2 uh, we are going to see all these uh, uh, things okay one is introduction setting up selenium id regarding and playing the script and editing the script debugging and verifying and assert uh, commands and in id has uh, many uh, features we are going to see in detail one by one and id options format clipboard so there are many other things we are going to see selenium commands yeah all those things so if you see uh, selenium uh, is already installed in my system okay let me uh, remove it and then we'll insert once again okay, okay. so uh, let's say to remove that first you need to go to a menu from their add-ons in the add-ons you can see uh, whatever is started with selenium id okay you can remove all those things so there will be many components will be installed uh, along with selenium id so all those things we need to uh, uninstall so along with this firebug also this selenium id this one and uh, firebug also you can remove okay this selenium id plugin okay so after done you just need to refresh the browser Okay, now you can see there is no selenium, right? So now we need to install it once again. So go to selenium download. Okay. So uh, remember this selenium hq dot org is the official site of selenium. Okay. So if you have any questions or any downloads required, okay, always uh, refer to the official site. Okay, that would be better. Okay. So now look for ID. So it has many downloads. Okay. So we are specifically interested in uh, Selenium ID. So so look for Selenium ID, and then you can see download the latest uh, released version of. 2.9.0 okay that is belongs to selenium id so just click on it so say hello now you can see all these things are going to be installed in your firefox sorry sir So when you are downloading Selenium IDE, so as it is a Firefox plugin to them, uh, it's a Firefox plugin, it's recommended to download from uh, Firefox itself, okay? Otherwise, if you use uh, Chrome or Internet Explorer, so you need to download the .xpa. All these plugins will be ended with a .xpa extension, okay? So once you download that .xpa file, okay, you need to drag it to Firefox again. Okay. So if you start downloading from uh, Firefox, so it will automatically rec the Firefox automatically recognize uh, there is a uh, plugin uh, has downloaded it. Okay, we need to uh, make a pop up to the user so that he can install it. Okay, it will automatically show the pop up so you can directly install it. Otherwise, you need to download and drag it to Firefox. Okay. So anything is okay. Now you can see Selenium. Uh, icon here and also you can see from the tools you can also see selenium id icon okay anything can be used to open the selenium id so i'm open this so so this is how selenium id looks so you have any idea about selenium id oh i have basic idea oh, okay 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 Let's take an example of this site, okay? So, using this Selenium ID, I'm going to record some of the user actions here, okay? So, before going to do all those things, okay, we need to uh, a little description about the Selenium ID, okay? okay? So, Selenium ID is basically a Firefox plugin, okay? And 
which records user actions and it is it has capability to play it back so a part of a record and play it also has a uh, plenty of features okay so uh, using that it is you know even it is little bit compared to the selenium rc or web driver okay but not fully let's say i'm um, I'm um, inserting thousand, and then five hundred, some three, fifteen, August two thousand sixteen, one point five, zero point two five, and then clicking on calculate. Now, if you see, so it has recorded many things. Let me uh, make it bigger. Okay, so this is the recorded session. By default, Selenium ID opens with recording option. Now you can see. So by default, it opens with recording. If you want to uh, stop it, you can click on this one. Okay. So uh, this is this is called editor of Selenium ID. Okay, it has three sections. One is command and the target. And the value. So command is so these are the commands. Open, click, type, select. All these are the commands. Okay. So let's say if you take type. So this type command ensuring to type thousand. Okay. So where it is going to enter thousand. So that will be defined by target. Okay. So let's say this type is going to enter 500 this type command is going to enter 500 but where it is going to enter the 500 is defined by target okay so target is nothing but okay it identifies the element uniquely in a web page if you see the loan amount so this is a loan amount which is identified uniquely by its id Okay, you can see the ID. So here, uh, one thing we need to remember is that so every element in a web page has certain properties or has certain attributes. Okay, so that could be either ID, name, uh, class, so uh, or many other many uh, other properties it will be having. Okay, so but Selenium uh, supports. Uh, right now id id name and class okay so if you don't have id name class okay you can also use xpath and css okay or also you can use tag name okay so this is how you are going to identify the elements which are available in the web page so if you see by default you can do view page source value okay so there's a label and there's the input right this is what we are entering okay so if you see the ide id the home value has identified by name okay it always says uh, by using what kind of locator the target was taken okay it's the name so this is the id okay so for entering something on home value it has taken the name attribute okay name param equal to param home value so you can see here the same thing it has taken okay let's say if you take this one uh, loan amount so this loan amount uh, has id as well as name okay so so one thing is enough to identify this particular input Okay. okay so it has taken id so the priority has given to id rather than name okay the first priority will be given to id rather than uh, name so that priority order also we'll see in you know, uh, going forward so this is called editor where you can see command target value okay and when you uh, click on something so it will be displayed here 
the command and the target and the value okay you cannot edit here but you can edit at this part okay there is any uh, name specifically called for this one the down thing comment comment target and value no we can say uh, i don't um the row editor there is no specific name for this the row editor okay. you can say or uh, uh, the editor simply okay. command editor you can say okay so let's say uh, i want this is a click and wait let me change it to click okay for example uh, so now you can see whatever you change it will be reflected here and once you done you can better recover to save the test case folder selenium okay so this is test it's a mortgage calculator okay let me save it zero one and then click on save now you can see what are the commands you have seen in this editor okay so those are recorded in html format okay so these are html format uh, format so each uh, row here each row here represent a another row here right so that is how it will be uh, recorded so you can also see how it has recorded in the source okay so it also will support you to see how it is recorded there is one thing and to execute right now we recorded the script and we saved it and we modified the script okay and we are going to run it now so just click on this one uh, play current test case so it's going to run it now it's it has executed the test case in very fast okay so you, you it's very difficult to view so how fast it is executed okay so if you want to see the test case executing slowly and so this is the option you have to move it to too slow okay how slow you want to execute or how fast you want to execute okay so you can choose the position and then click it again now you can see uh, each command executing very slow so now it's opening and it's typing 1000 and typing 500 typing 3 so you can see how it is changing yeah. okay and it's done and one more thing uh, you can see is so whatever it has executed it will log everything along everything and let's say if you click on something and go to the reference so it will show you uh, the complete information about particular command okay it's the information about uh, click and it is the information about type okay so the type is taking two arguments one is locator and another one is value so locator we specify in the target and value we specify in the value section right and let me uh, create another test case okay so to do that we got it
this time enter 2000 thousand five ten one point five zero point three five click on calculator okay, again save it with the name So if you see, uh, there is a command called click and wait. Okay, so it's always recommended to use click and wait. So whenever you are click making a uh, refresh of the page or you are click making a new page. Okay, okay. let's say uh, you clicked here. Uh, so that time the entire thing is calculated, and to show the result, it is refreshing the page. Yeah. Okay, so that is uh, that is the time it is recommended to use click and wait. So this click will uh, the only click it will just click and it will start executing the next command whereas click and wait it will click and wait for the page to load completely then only it will go for next command here right now there is no next command so we can also add a next command let's say i want to click on this output parameter okay, okay. so to click on that one we need to know the target okay so the target can be identified okay using one of the locator that is id name uh, even uh, link link partial link okay let me write here some we already written okay few more things are link a partial link text okay so all these are called as locators okay using any one of the locator of any element we can identify that particular uh, element in the web page okay so right now to identify this element the only way we are having is uh, view the page source okay so so that is the time you have to uh, you know um, you have to take the uh, particular link i mean particular text and you have to uh, search in the entire the source okay so that will be a tedious task for us okay so for that there is a firefox plugin there is a firefox plugin that is called firebug which help you to identify the properties of any element okay so firebug download you can specify so again when you say firebug download there are going you are going to see uh, many download sections okay so always it is better to go for the official website that is uh, add-ons mozilla okay this is the official site for any firefox plugin so just click on it so add to firefox it is installed so you can see another uh, section here that is file bar just click on it okay so this will be open so this is called inspector selector okay so click on this one and go to the element which you want to inspect so this is the element which i wanted to inspect just click on it okay so this is a anchor tag when you open it so this is what you can see output parameters and this symbol together is called a link okay so and apart of that can you see any id or name for this span yeah span for the span it is there but for the output parameter do you see any id name okay no no we can't see right okay yeah. so the only way uh, we can ID identify this output parameter is there are two ways okay so one is using the link okay so all the anchor tags we consider as a link okay using the link okay. and 
XPath or CSS. Okay, these are the ways we can identify. Okay, so as we are available with the link, okay, it's better to go with link. So XPath or CSS are the last option when you don't say ID name, okay, or link or partial link text. Okay, when you cannot identify the element uniquely, okay. So using the ID or name or class or link or partial link test. So that is the time you have to look into XPath and CSS. So these sections will see uh, detailed going forward. So right now, uh, let me take the link. So if you see the link, so the link is there for the entire uh, you know, text, okay, including the symbol. So you have to take this entire uh, link. Okay, control C. Copy to a notepad. So take this entire uh, string. Okay. So this is the one, right? So you want to click. So okay, this is already selected. Okay. okay. So we are in the recording mode. So what are the actions we performed? All are recorded. So, so let me remove all those things. Okay. Now this is where we want to add a click, click operation, and the target is and that's a link, right? Link yeah. equal to. So you can specify like this, and the value, value doesn't require, right? We are not going to enter anything. Okay. So for the uh, basically for click, there is uh, there is no value required. And save it. Okay. Now uh, select the test case. Okay, you can see the link is open and it has displayed uh, some other options. Okay, okay. So, so that is how this particular button is to click on the uh, selected test cases. Okay, when you want to execute multiple test cases which are displayed here, so we can click on this one. Okay. okay, so before clicking, so let me change something here so that it will be failed. Okay, and you can also see how a failure will be. And started executing uh, test MGC01. So you can see uh, so when it is failed so here you, you are going to see the red color thing okay it says run is 2 and failures are 1 and here the click is also shown red color so when you go to the long so you can also able to find it out so the error message here okay so if you see the long there are uh, multiple things one is debug info one error okay so you can able to filter the logs so what you can uh, you can see the log levels these are called log levels okay so one is info debug debug and then one and then uh, error so that is how we are seeing okay so oh, the first one is debug Okay, the second one is info. So these are you can say a priority. Okay, 
so first priority is debug and the second one is the info third one is one and the error okay so let's say i want an error uh, for example i want a debug so you can see everything so it's filtering okay you can see the debug You can also see info and error, right? Okay. You can see all those things. Let let's say uh, let me select a info. Can you able to see the debug? No. Okay. Okay. Remember that when you say one, can you see uh, the error? There is no uh, there is no one lags. So, but it only shown a uh, error. Okay. When you select error. you can anyway see there okay so this is let's say when i select the debug so it displays debug and it displays info and warn and error okay when i select info it only display info as well as warn and error so it's not going to display debug right yeah. so if you want to see you can select again info so you don't see the debug but when you select the debug you can see debug info all those things let's say when you select the one you can see one as well as errors okay as there is no warning messages so it has displayed error so when you select the error it only show error there is nothing um, you know behind or you know after the error there is nothing right so it only show error yeah. so these are called you know priority of the logs okay so all these are called log levels and the displaying the logs is called priority of logs okay so when you select debug it's going to display everything okay so when you are only interested in errors select this one okay when you are interested in info one error select this one when you are interested in one and error select the one okay so that is how it display hierarchy okay, okay. so this uh, something important they might ask you uh, what are the log levels you can see in the selenium ide okay, okay. so that is one thing and what are the uh, priorities of log how it's going to display okay have you uh, excised this one like that they ask um, yeah. and so we can see a save a test case and save test case as okay it is to uh, rename the test case or recreate another test case okay so export the test case yeah i will explain this let's say um, you have uh, defined two test cases okay so you want to exit i mean export this test case to uh, the desired language which you are uh, requiring okay for example export test case as ruby java c sharp okay right now it is supporting three languages where you can export your test cases okay in this three languages also sorry python also total four okay in this four languages also there are uh, multiple other ways you can export it so you want to export as a java jnet web driver or uh, java test ng remote control or java jnet for web driver Okay. Web driver backend. Okay, there are uh, multiple ways. So we are interested in Java JUnit web driver. This is the latest one which we are using it. So web driver backend backed is basically for those who are coming from remote RC right, Serene RC to web driver. Okay, it is for uh, to support backward compatibility for them. Okay, so let me select Java JUnit web driver. so this is my desktop and id so which uh, we are exporting for what test mg 01 right so let me change it to dot java we can see that how it is saved you can see open with edit with notepad plus plus okay so we can see test in so this is the java code okay okay and this is in a uh, web driver web it has used web driver apis 
to uh, record all these things okay so that is how let's say um, so this can be very much useful let's say you want to uh, automate some of the code in web driver but you are not exactly sure how to uh, write that piece of code okay so that is the time you can you can record that steps using the selenium ide and save the test again and then export as a desired language which you are looking okay that could be c sharp or java web driver okay that is uh, one option it's a very useful option okay and you can also see the recent test cases so which we have executed and you can also add the test case. let's say uh, you have closed the ide so that is the time you don't see all these uh, test cases here so the time to add the test cases to your um, you know uh, test case section okay so you can add the test case so it will open the browser uh, it opens open browser where you can select your test case and select open it will be displayed here and so you can also modify the title of a test case okay so this is the test case you can modify it okay using this title and so there is a new test suite and open test suite save test suite okay so basically uh, a suite is uh, nothing but to group group certain test cases let's say now i am having two test cases which i wanted to group select these two okay and say test suit it's going it's going to ask you a so where you need to give suit name let me give test mortgage suit. okay just save it now if you see here it to a suit is created so it doesn't have any extension it's a, uh, just a raw file so when you see here again it is in the html uh, format so there are two rows and each row is referring a, a test case right test mgc01 html test mgc02 html okay so this is how so it is very much useful let's say you uh, close the ide and when you reopen you don't see all those things so that is the time you can go to file and open test suite and select this one and you can see all those things okay okay now to run both of the test case use this one play entire test suite and export test suite you can also export this uh, test suite in different languages it supports ruby java and c sharp okay and you can also see the recent test switch which we uh, executed or open okay. so and edit is basically uh, uh, let's say cut copy let's say when you select this one you can see uh, the more uh, edit options cut copy delete select all insert new command insert new com uh, comment okay let's say you want to insert a command you know uh, between here okay so that is the type you can do uh, control again i guess control n is going to give a new test so when you want to insert something you can do right click do insert new command or you can go to the edit do insert new command anything is okay and if you see the actions so it has how to add comment um, let's say do right click insert new comment okay okay so that's all this is a command which is not going to be executed in your uh, test execution okay and uh, type i mean the com comment also displays in a different uh, uh, color right so you can able to e easily and you know uh, identify it so it is a com it is a command and this is a command and yeah we can see all these things this basically actions are okay so all these you know what are the actions you can see uh, most of the options are available here uh, run a current test case run a entire test suite record stop record move it fast or slow okay so and execute this command whatever this 
command you selected if you want to execute execute this command or to execute this command for example you can also double click can you see right it is entered 500 okay, okay. let me click on this one it is already having some 20, some 20,000 or something or 2,000 let me click on this one so you are going to see that it is going to enter 1000 okay so you can do double click or you can use this execute this command okay so how fast you want to execute slower okay slowest okay so something and play the entire test suite okay so toggle breakpoint and it is toggle breakpoint will come into debugging a test case okay so that i will show you debugging a test case and there are many options here okay so in this option itself there are many other things okay there are many tabs so all these things uh, which we are going to see in our uh, next class okay? okay yeah so it will be uh, uh, too much hectic if i go through all those things we'll see in your next class